Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Let's Talk ESL with me, Sherman. Today, you know, I, I just kind of want to talk about a lot of the changes that have been going on in the game. Because a lot of people are, you know, they a lot of people get upset when there's changes that directly affect their play style, it directly affects their play. And, uh, honestly guys, I do understand why a lot of people get upset, but I also understand game development. I know, it doesn't seem like it, but... Uh, the reality of the truth is, a lot of developers make changes to their games because they, the, the game design they inten intentionally created the game with isn't being utilized, or it's being overutilized, and they, they have to do things to bring that back in balance with the game's design. And a lot of the changes here lately have been to do that, exactly. They balance the Munda Stones to bring them in balance with the game's design. They balance the, the, the traits on the weapons for game design. They, they balance the classes by game design. And not only did that, but they also made a balance change to the champion points for, for it to work as the game's design required. See, the, the developers are playing by, or designing the game with a certain rule set in mind. And any time that rule set is I don't want to say misused because that's a that's a very heavy word, but we'll say that ill used. We'll just use ill used. Um, like, like for example, the block costs. The reason they keep nerfing block costs isn't because it's not intended for use. It's not intended for use the way people use it have or have been utilizing it, and. A lot of the blame's been going on the PvP side, when in reality, most of the blame comes from the PvE side. Because they didn't create the dynamics of boss encounters for us, the players, to face them with a perma-blocking tank. Blocking has always been a strategic use skill. Nobody's been using it that way because everyone's been focused on this idea that we have to sit and hold block all the time. Um, and, and we could go on. I mean, I could go on with every change in the game and give you guys a reason why a lot of these changes could have been made. But the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of these changes get made for that reason. Because the developers never intended for certain things to be used a certain way. Like the idea of our characters not using recovery and using synergies to regain resources. Like orbs and spear shards. The game's intent was for us to use those in dire need situations, not to survive off of those, not to re require those constantly. And that's why they made some changes to even those things, was because a lot of it was being overused. So they balanced it out, made it more to where we have to rely on other things. And the thing that a lot of people aren't relying on is this. Nobody's using stem recovery. Nobody builds for it. And the reason why is because they go, oh, well, I lose too much DPS. Okay? You lose some DPS. Does it break your character? Does it stop your character from actually working? No. And it never will. What it'll do is it'll make you start to think, maybe I should do something else like possibly use a different food or maybe something else to get that effect. And again, it's not me trying to be rude towards the community or, or to be harsh. It's truth of reality. We play this game and we have to play by the rules they design the game with. Resource management is one of them. And if we don't play by the rules they give us to play by, they have to make adjustments so we do play by those rules. Whether we like it or not. Just like right now, we're getting a lot of changes to block cost again. We're getting a lot of changes to synergies. We're getting a lot of changes to the off balance. What, what, what's the main source of DPS? Off balance. It's one of the biggest sources of, of increased DPS, and that's because of one passive in the champion point tree, Exploiter. Increases the damage done against off-balance enemies by 
Well, opportunist also plays into that to a slight degree because when you set an enemy off balance, sometimes you interrupt them. So your next attack, physical damage ability with use within 50 seconds is 15% more. So that's a 25% increase in damage. And then we could even go further than that and even to call retaliation into play. Because when you block a heavy attack, you interrupt them and you can set them off balance. So you can increase your damage again by 30%. See, there's a lot of ways to, to multiply your damage in this game. And you get a lot of additional bonuses. It's not just the exploiter passive. That's just the easiest one that people were using. Because it was easy, it's easy to set people off balance when you're utilizing the one ability that does it. And that's shock. Because it applies minor vulnerability, which knocks the enemies off balance. And that's what a lot of people rely on. They rely on certain things. And they became too reliant. They became so reliant on it that if, the, if it didn't have it, people would literally not play with you. And it wasn't a, 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 a thing of meta versus non-meta. It's, just, it's the, just how people play. And when you go and change something in a game that you know is going to detrimentally change how people play it, you want to make it to where it's not so detrimental. It hurts the game, but it's n enough of a change to get them to go, oh, wait, maybe I see why they're making these changes. Maybe that's why they are making these changes. Now, it's kind of funny because a lot of people are really mad about DK changes. Now, I've been playing it a DK since my third character. So, my third character I ever made in the game was a DK. And I've played him every possible way I can. Stamina DPS, Magic DPS, Tank, Healer. Well, not quite Healer so much, but like Tank. Um and magic and stamina DPS, most definitely. Mainly tank. But when I did play in magic and DPS, the one thing I knew was how fired DKs work. It's about dots, the same way the stamina DPS version works. It's about applying dots and keeping them up consistently. Because the more dots I can get, the more damage my character is going to do. But that's the problem. People aren't seeing it that way. They're seeing it as, oh, well, if I just do this and this, and I do this ability, I get a lot of burst. DKs were never meant, were, were, weren't designed with burst in mind. They were designed with dots in mind. Damage over time. Now, fire damage is some of the most powerful damage in the game. In fact, Fire staves are designed around the idea of doing massive damage. Even their passives. Fully charged heavy attacks deal 6% additional damage. Down here. Flame staff increases the damage done by single target abilities by 4%. It's not that they don't want you to do damage. They want you to do damage. But the thing is, is nobody's utilizing the full potential of the DK. Because they keep trying to make all the builds the same when it comes to the meta. And it's not that they're n not allowed to. It's just DKs work a certain way. They work around dots. And if you don't utilize the ability to apply dots along with extra damage with a light weave or a heavy attack weave, your choice, you, you'll never know the true potential of a DK. And it's funny, because I, I could even tell you, like, you can run Burning Spell Weave, you know, with Julianus and make a, a pretty good build, but it won't be that good. It'll be good, but not that good. It'd be better if you could run Grothar with it. <laughs> or you could run Vulcan Scoria with it. Because those two sets work with that build really, with that class really well. And if you're a Dark Elf, it works even better. In fact, I think Dark Elves were designed for Dragon Knights. 7% more fire damage. Fire resistance. Lava resistance. <laughs> but, again, 
I'm not doing this to diminish anybody's thoughts or tell you guys that you guys are wrong because everyone has a right to their own opinion. And if you feel like they're directly attacking you, that's your choice. I, I can't decide that. I just know from a designer's perspective that a lot of the changes that they've made to this game has been to directly change these things to bring them in balance of the game's design. That's it. Do I agree with every change they make? No. Do I get mad at them? Sure. Do I throw a tantrum? No. It's not worth it. Something I learned uh, really well with kids. Doesn't matter how much of a tantrum they throw. The more they do it, the, the, the more they make themselves just look bad. No offense. Now, do I agree with what players say about some of the choices they make that, that or th things they offer as suggestions? Of course I agree with some of them. Some of their ideas are really clear. But it's not clear to the devs because the devs might not see it that way. And that's the thing a lot of people don't take, for, uh, take into account, is they don't take into account that we're not the ones making the game. We play it. We can offer our opinions and thoughts but we can't get them to change the game to our perspective because our perspective is individual per person. And yes, we might all agree on different things, but not everyone's going to agree on everything. Every game is designed with rules. We have to follow those rules and play by them. If we choose to break those rules and over-utilize stuff or, or oversimplify something by the utilization of something as not intended by design, they will adjust it to make it attend uh, to be used as intended. In fact, they even stated that in some of the patch notes in today's um, thing, 3.2 or 3.3.2, they, they even stated that in some of the things. Like, this ability wasn't meant to be used this way. We adjusted to make it work by design. And, and it's always going to be a guessing game for development, for developers to decide, okay, is this how we want this ability to really work? We can try it and see how it goes. And if things don't work out, we have three months to figure out how to make it better. And that's what they've been doing. They've been doing that for th every three months. They've been going through and reiterating changes to our characters and to our skills and stuff. Look at what just happened last update. They changed Malevolent Offering on the Nightblade. This skill, they changed it from a really good lockdown ability to a heal. This update coming up, Dragon Bones, they've adjusted the, the, the cost of the ability because everyone complained about the cost. They're adjusting it because they realized that the cost was too much. It wasn't because players were telling them it was too much. They saw for themselves it was too much. They wanted to see its use in play. They needed to gather data. They can't do that on a test server. They can't do that on an internal server. There's not enough people testing it. They have to get it to live to see how it works and see how effective it is and then go, okay, this ability works this well. It's not getting utilized by a lot of people because of the cost. Let's adjust the cost and see if it gets used more. Okay, now it's getting used a little bit more. Okay, let's adjust the cost again. And this could happen over a year's time until they get it perfect. Or until they get it to the place they want it. But they're not going to change the ability. They're going to change the cost. They, now they might change the ability if the ability isn't working as intended. And this is a lot of things that happen in these MMOs. This is why these changes happen is to compensate for changes in intent. Okay, we never intended block costs to be this freaking, per, you know, like this low. We meant for them to be costly. 
so that people use it strategically. They use it in a, in a strategic situation. Okay, I know the boss is going to hit me with three heavy attacks, a light attack, and a really big AoE attack. That AoE is going to do the most damage. If I can block a couple of those heavy attacks, and I can mitigate some of the other damage with my damage shields, I only need to really block that big AoE attack with a damage shield and the block ability because the damage shield will absorb its amount of damage, whatever it says. If it says it, it absorbs 12k, it takes 12k damage and the rest goes to you. So it'll absorb 12k of like say 25. So that leaves 23k damage, or sorry, 13k damage that you're still going to take. Well, if you block the ability with your resistances and all your damage reduction and everything else, you can mitigate literally 86% of that damage right now as a DK. It's 86% of that 13k. That's not going to leave you very much damage to take. But people aren't paying attention. They're not seeing that, well, I'm using this block cost thing, and I'm literally running around with 17k stamina. Again, not ideal for a person playing the game by design. It's really not. It's a really bad place to be. 20k and above, you're good as a tank. That's like ideal by just looking at numbers and, and that's just me personally how I feel about the game like that's ideal for tanky but they don't expect you to stand there and hold block through everything now there's gonna be certain encounters like the axis where you might need more block but it doesn't mean that you can't strategically block that encounter or uh, mitigate that damage of that encounter with the healer and damage shields. <clears throat> Nobody does that. I've watched, I've seen countless videos where nobody takes the time to utilize their damage shields against those axes. They hold block and they'll pop damage shields every so often when they have the resources to spare. But if you have enough damage shields, you can mitigate a large portion of that damage from those axes so you can save your resources for blocking. And you're not burning through a ton of resources blocking. Now, I understand how the axes work, guys. Seen enough videos now, experienced it for myself, now I know. And if I can tank it with my Templar tank, who doesn't have as much, it no sturdy gear, 56 or 56 points in a block cost, which gives me 20%, plus the 36% I get from that, and 8% I get from the defensive posture. If I can survive tanking axes, anyone can. They do physical damage, by the way, and I get 15% more damage mitigation against the axes as a Templar. So I can tank those things better than the DK. But that's not the point. The point is, is that when you overutilize something to such a degree that it goes against the game's design, they have to adjust it. And that's all they're doing. They're adjusting things to put them back into the, the design perspective of the game. And like I said, I don't agree with every change they make. I get just as frustrated as everyone else. I just know from experience and from my education that that's not how it's done. That that's not how it works. That when you create an MMO, you create a game world and you create rules within that world. If those rules or the things that you put into that world don't work based on the rules you're setting forth, you have to adjust. And it's a balancing competition. It's almost like a person walking a tightrope. 
there's a fine line <laughs> of writing of where it's going to be over the edge or too much over the over one edge or the other and you don't want it to go over the edge you want it to be trying to keep it in the middle just one wrong mistake and it's going to go over the edge and it's going to plummet and you don't want that and that's what happens that's what happened with a lot of things and with time they adjust things and you got to remember they're constantly updating the game every three months. They're not putting in major changes into the game unless they they have a reason. Like if they know something's bugged, they try to fix it in between. But if it's nothing major, nothing that can't wait, you know, for them to gather more data on and stuff, they wait until those big update times and then make the adjustments. And that's what they're doing right now. They're making adjustments. Like I said, guys, it, it, it's really just personal preference. It's opinion. All this kind of stuff that we are getting angry with the devs about. And the reality is, yes, a lot of the changes suck. But we're not the ones making the game. We can't... We can complain all we want. It's not going to change the fact that they are the developers. They are the ones who set the rules. They are the ones who set the standard. And when they create their game to be a certain way, we have to abide by those rules. And it's not like it can't be done or they, that they can't make any changes. They're the ones who get to make the changes. We get to give them our thoughts and our opinions. That's it. They can either listen to them or not. Now, they're not going to listen to one person. They're going to listen to thousands who are repeating the same thing. That's when they know something's wrong. That's when they make adjustments. But they don't make adjustments to abilities because, oh, well, I think this would be better this way unless everyone's saying the same thing. And they don't make adjustments to things because, oh, well, it's it's overkill in PvP. Somebody's standing and holding block. Yeah, well, they're going to run out of resources pretty quick if you beat on them long enough. And when they run out of those resources, trust me, they have to do heavy attacks in to get their resources back. Otherwise, they're dead. And if they're dead, they're not doing anything to hurt anyone. And that's, that's the thing. Like, a lot of people just don't understand. Like, why do they keep making these changes? Why do they keep doing this? Why do they keep doing that? This is just an idea. <laughs> okay? This is just a theory. But in my opinion, everything I said in this video is the reason why. Everyone's complaining about block costs. Well, why are you complaining about the block cost use? Or the block cost reduction? Because it's affecting your build. Have you ever thought of why it's affecting your build? Or why they would make this change? Well, you're blocking using block too much. It wasn't intended for that purpose. It was meant to mitigate damage, but not indefinitely. And not at such a low cost that it, you have no repercussion for blocking. And that's what they're getting at. You're not playing the game by our rules. We're going to adjust it so you do. And it's not that you're not playing by the rules. You found a loophole to their rules. And they're fixing it. And this goes with anything. Like anything. Because trust me. There's loopholes in everything. When somebody figures out that you're using that loophole. They will come in behind you and fix it in some way, shape, or form if they can. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. It's just conversation. You know, if you want to complain and argue with the devs, please keep it to them. 
this channel or this video isn't for that. It's just to, to have a discussion. That's it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So, also to give you guys a heads up, because of the release of the PTS and it being held back for a day, there's a good chance that uh, I'll be a, a little behind on getting builds out because the intention was to build them tonight when I'm working on this video and release them tomorrow, uh, the first two, and then work on the rest of them tomorrow for the week. So I have, I'll have them laid out and, and ready to go so I could release them. That might not work out <laughs> to my advantage. And uh, it's not that I don't have time. Like first thing in the morning, I'm gonna be getting up. I'm gonna be, if PTS is live, I'm gonna get on there. I'm gonna build all the builds or I'm gonna start working on the, the first two tank builds releases and then get them out the door then I'm going to go down the line and release the main tank off tank for each class after that. No, I'm not going to tell you what classes I'm starting with. Everyone's probably thinking, oh, you're going to start with the Templar or the DK or the Warden or the Nightblade or the Sork. Well, you can keep guessing because <laughs> no one's going to guess it uh, right out the door. And if they do, I'm never going to, I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to let it be a surprise. So, yeah. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, so if you guys have thoughts and opinions on this stuff, you know, on having a civil discussion, please leave it in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to talk about it. Give my thoughts and opinions. I already did in my video. You guys can counter it. You can say what you will. That's fine. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can hit that subscribe button. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.